WLAN network plan and a typical case. Objective Describe WLAN typical application, WLAN design process. Understand WLAN design matter. WLAN typical application. So this is an example of the application, including the campus, public area, exhibition center, office building, hotel, industrial park, residential, and uh, business room. So all those locations also require the WLAN to perform the, the wireless coverage. So of course, different application, the requirement for the AP and the configuration might be different. So here giving some um, example, the scenario and the characteristic. For the scenario campus, there's high user density, a large number of concurrent users, high bus traffic and the high network quality demand. Okay, so this is happening to the campus. Campus basically have a lot of the user and you would like to um, have the high network quality. Scenario um, meeting room, exhibition center. Same, also have high user density. Large nu uh, number of the concurrent user. So basically from here, the meeting room and the exhibition, uh, uh, exhibition center, similar to the campus. The only difference here is when in the scenario exhibition center, they might have the wide and open area. To the hotel, they have a low user density and few concurrent user. So basically one hotel can be very big and a lot of the, um, the guests will going to stay in the hotel, but doesn't mean it's everyone will going to connect to the, the Wi-Fi because people were going to stay in the hotel, they actually is only um, at the night time. Okay. So that's, that's, uh, that's right, they put low user um, density and a few concurrent user. Low continuous traffic, they were not going to stay at the hotel for very long, because early morning until evening time, maybe they have some work or they go outside. So only evening time, they return back to the hotel. So there's a very low con uh, continuous traffic. White coverage area and the signal blocked by the wall. Then the next one is the enter, uh, entertainment place. Low user density, low continuous traffic, small coverage area, and open area. At the entertainment place, basically less of people will going to um, connect to the wireless. Okay, even yes, they just connect the part, they less access to the um, browsing the web. Okay, because this is an enter uh, entertainment place, who going to go to the area there and just uh, take out the phone or take out the laptop and browse the internet? Or maybe, yes, they just doing some survey, that's all. Okay, it's only for um, the very low continuous traffic. Transportation hub. So they only have a temporary tour, but they require a very wide coverage area, open area and no network quality demand. There's no important on, on the quality because all the, the guests staying in the, um, the transportation hub is just for temporary. And the last one is the office. High user density, continuous traffic, and the network quality demand. In the office area, yes, you need to make sure the traffic quality. They have many employees staying in the office and the traffic is always continual. For the device type, indoor setter AP. The feature for this is high, band, uh, high bandwidth and single, uh, simple deployment. Suitable for the scenario, it requires a high user density, the large number of a concurrent user, such as the multimedia classroom, meeting room, and the exhibition center. Indoor distributed AP single space, flexible antenna system, large indoor coverage area, and low cost. Instead, I'm going to deploy so many AP in the scenario like hotel. Basically, a hotel in one floor might have many rooms. Impossible, you're going to deploy 
uh, so many AP in the same firm, then you'll be overutilized. Okay, I'm um, sorry, they will be going to spend a lot of the cost for this kind of deployment. So basically, they will prefer to using the indoor distributor AP to reduce the cost. Then outdoor AP, high transmit power. The transmit power will be very high. The reason why, why they adjust the transmit power is because outdoor AP is most uh, often using for the uh, WDS point to point, the far distance coverage. And they need to have the waterproof and the dust proof. The next, the brilliant design process. So this one is already covered on the previous slide, but they have some um, difference after the um, the size survey. So right here they add the coverage mode and the device type selection. After we doing the size survey, we already understand about the application already. Like um, this is the office building, and we already understand um, uh, we have the floor plan. We need to know the coverage. Right, so which area need to have a stronger signal strength and which area it doesn't require. So after understanding about this, then we need to select the right device to deploy. Okay, um, the next one will be the frequency band. Okay, understand? Is it require the 5 GHz or um, does it require a link budget, capacity allocation? Then go to the device configuration. Engineering implementation. Then the last one will be the optimization. The coverage mode for the type indoor half open area. Used for the scenario hotel lobby, or the restroom, or the restaurant. We can use in the indoor setter AP. To the meeting room, exhibition hall, we can choose indoor setter AP or the distributed systems. Indoor area separate by the wall. The scenario like office building or the guest room. So we can choose either um, indoor setter AP or indoor distributed system. The outdoor area. So we only have one choices. We we'll only select the outdoor AP. Then the next thing we need to consider is the AP powering mode. So to understand about the, the network design and understand whether the environment there they have any PoE switch or not. Okay, if they have no PoE switch, then you might need to consider to purchase one PoE switch or using um, the DC adapter to power up your AP. And the last option we can try to using the injector. Frequency band. So we can using the uh, the frequency used by region are specified by the country code. Okay, and the local regulation. Okay, the example. Two point four gigahertz frequency band in China have thirteen channel, and there's only three available non overlapping channel. One six eleven. The frequency band 5 GHz support 5 channel, 1492, 165 only. So check on site channel occupation and uh, um, interference, facilitating frequency selection and the, uh, interference prevention. So after we're doing a site survey, try to do some calculate for the channel used by um, the surrounding. Okay, going to total up all the SSID and the channel. So try to using the less uh, less uh, using channel become your on channel. The interference in the five gigahertz is greatly smaller than the uh, two point four. If the terminal support five gigahertz, okay, then the five gigahertz is always the recommended. Then the next one, we have the link budget. The budget link and the calculate the coverage area by giving the formula like this one, okay, the, the strength. So it's the, um, the AP transmit power, okay, the PT is the AP transmit power. GT is the transmit and then again. GR is and then again. 
minus the path loss and minus the loss in the cable and the component. So of course this one will depend on what kind of the model of AP that we're using. So I can give a one uh, very um, simple example. So we will have one AP. Okay, so this result. So I have the ERRP. So this ERRP, after they come out from this antenna, the strength just giving the assembler is 20 dBm. Okay, 20 dBm is 20. They come out from here. So we need to calculate. Okay, this is my laptop. Okay, I have one PC on very far away. So very far away. So right now the radio wave has to deliver to my PC. So in between here, when they have one obstacle blocking in between, so they might cause some of the penetration. So now due to the distance like this one, how far away of the distance? So example, when the wireless, the ERP go through this distance, okay, this distance is 10 meter. Okay, 10 meter. So the 10 meter, uh, the path loss is equal to 71. 71 dB. It's, it's no M, okay, it's dB. So the answer here will be 20. Okay, then it will be depend. Is it this AP will come with the external antenna? If those external antenna, okay, they have one external antenna and this antenna will give the gain like um, 3 dB 3 dBi okay now the formula will become 20 is my ERP plus my antenna again my antenna again is 3 and I'm going to transmit my radio wave to my PC in the distance 10 meter so the path loss the further that I go the more loss that I will have. So that's why right now in between the 10 meter, I need to minus 71. So this is a 71 loss in the 10 meter. And don't forget this one, the obstacle, they'll cause how many loss. So giving the example, this is eight. So anything passed through here, they will lose eight dB. So now I'm going to minus eight. Okay, then you get the answer. So 20 plus 3 will be 23. Okay, then minus these two. Okay, 79. So you become 56. And then in DBM. So when you're using the um, some of the scanning software from your PC, then you'll notice this one is a signal that you receive. So there's further proof why the signal that we receive is always in the negative. Then the next is capacity plan. Consider device performance, number of the users, bandwidth requirement, and wireless environment. Calculate the number of required AP. Factors affecting capacity, device performance, okay, the number of the concurrent user. The device performance is those of the um, the model that we're using. If the device we're selecting is the um, uh, the low spec one, so they might can't able to um, manage too many user. And the next one is the number of a concurrent user. Too many user connect to the same AP, they will cause the congestion also. The bandwidth requirement, and the last one will be the interference. Application assembler of indoor setter AP. Doubling coverage in office building. Wire network cannot meet service de uh, deployment requirements and it is difficult to add network interf interface on the wire network. So, every have a mobile office requirement and the visitor and guests of the company need to wirelessly access network. Okay, so this is the reason why they require the wireless. And right now, a lot of the office building is right on the wireless already. So the requirement here, employee need to access the internet and send, receive email. 
Signal need to cover all waiting room and the open area. The corridor, uh, corridor and the washroom are optional. Okay, so this one is uh, you be depend. Okay, corridor and the washroom. So if they have some special request on uh, the washroom, also you can have a, a very strong signal strength. Yes, then you can consider deploy one AP in the washroom. Signal must be provided continuously, and high quality signal are provided to a key area. The site design requirement. Okay, right now giving the example, they have two hundred employees then always have 25 concurrent rate. So that means it's not 100% of the um, the employee will go online. It's always is, uh, 75. Each user is required 2 megabit per, per user. Okay. Site survey. In the half open office area, the average area of each user is okay, 4 to 6. And um, the office area is divided into many rooms by grass and the brass support. Device selection. So we can using the indoor center AP with the dual band. The network design 2.4 can consider using the non-overlapping area 1611. Okay, and then they have also have a five gear has. Then the link budget. AP coverage radius in 8 to 12 meter and the primary signal strength is higher than minus 65 so you need to make sure in some of the um, the core area so the signal strength cannot be weak uh, weaker than the minus 65 must be better than this capacity plan the number of required AP is four. Okay, they're using this um, formula to get the answer. And independent AP is deployed in each meeting room. So AP transmit power. Okay, they're giving the calculation 10 dB M1 at 2.4. Okay, 2.4 is using this one, and they have a 20 dB and a 5 gigahertz. Okay, this is a, the transmit power. Then the next, this one, description. Support 2.4 and 5 GHz frequency band and the channel multiplexing. Reduce transmit power. Each AP cover 150 to 300. Deploy an independent AP in each medium sized meeting room. Sitting mount or wall mount AP and use the column and the wall to control AP coverage area. Number four, application example of indoor distributed AP. Then the background here. Hotel customer has various network access requirement. Adding the wire network in the face need to redeploy cable. The long reconstruction period will affect the hotel operation. Wireless network can improve customer certifi uh, uh, certification. So the hotel and employee need to access the network wirelessly. Can now no longer have a people using the LAN cable to access the network, especially in the hotel. And the requirement here, the wireless signal cover each corner of the guest room. And every user requires 2 megabit per second bandwidth. Okay, of course, this one will be depend on the uh, the hotel, all right. Um, some hotel they might not giving um, two Mac. So the site design requirement: one hundred guest room. Then they always will have one or two guests in a room. Two Mbps per user. The room are spread by the grass and the plus support. So the device subjection we can using the indoor distribute AP. Try to using the OMI direction so you can cover the surrounding using the ceiling mount and then okay, the frequency will be the same as just now. The link budget. Each AP have six to eight antenna. So this is a recommended one. So even we're using the distributed AP, they can support the uh, a lot of the antenna. 
but try to don't connect too many okay suggest it, uh, using the 6 to 8 antenna because too many antenna you're going to use it will weaken the coverage area and also the signal strength so each AP cover 10 to 15 room a total of 9 APs are required so this is a transmit power 24 dBm for the 2.4 GHz so this is how they are actually going to deploy with using the distribution AP so the AP they can locate the, uh, inside the ceiling here or maybe somewhere else so they are all using the fader line Okay, the fader line connect to the uh, copper, 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 or maybe the this is the sprinter. Okay, they connect to the sprinter and join to the antenna. Okay, so you can use it this way to make the full coverage for a different room. And the last one is an example of the outdoor AP. Background Digital Campus Construction while the signal coverage in auto area. The requirement, signal cover the main street. Okay, uh, this one actually is the building. Okay, this, uh, this is a block of the building or the shop lot. So, and this is the one way, the corridor or the street. So, uh, the signal cover the main street. Okay, we have to cover all the street. Uh, square, park, and the uh, green belt. Each user need higher than one Mbps bandwidth. The requirement signal cover outdoor area medium user density one megabit per second memory for each user the distance between the building are 20 meter distance between the building is 20 meter 20 meter okay 20 to 30 so the selection for the device we can using the outdoor AP only so 8 dBi only direction antenna and another one is the 11 dB directional antenna okay they're going to choose two different antenna one is the only direction another is directional okay the frequency band we're using the 2.4 so the link uh, the link budget when using 11 dBi direction antenna the AP signal strength is higher than minus 65 Okay, within 300 meter capacity plan user density is low so each AP connect to 30 users and require one Mbps bandwidth for each user okay this is a parameter setting 27 dBm at 2.4 gigahertz so this is how I said it at the point they put in one omni direction AP Okay, this is the outdoor AP with the only direction antenna. So you're going to cover the, the area here. Okay, they have the full coverage. Then for another area, because here they might have some bright spot, they can't able to fully cover. So they're going to deploy the AP on these two area using the directional antenna. An AP cover less than 200 meter distance. And the coverage angle is larger than 120 degree. The only direction antenna with the gain of 8 dBi. To cover a narrow area with a distance less than 300 meter, choose the directional antenna with the load width 60 degree. And gain is 11 dBi. Omni direction antenna is installed on the pole. At the street, okay, they, uh, they might hang on the uh, on the pool there. Okay, somewhere at the middle here, and the directional antenna can be mount on the wall. Okay, this one can mount uh, at the wall, no problem. So PoE powering is used. Okay, AP transmit power can be adjusted on site. So after everything is already deployed, so we can adjust the transmit power from our controller. Then the last one here is for the WDS backhaul. The background here. A company provides WLAN coverage for building site B. 
okay, where the does not have the wire network. Okay, the side bit, the building, they have no wire network. Leasing a wire channel from the carrier requiring the high cost. So if they're going to pull the cable, okay, as somebody, this is my side A. So the side A have the internet access, but my side B have no internet access. Okay, they require, if they're going to pull the cable connected from the side A to the side B, with two kilometers away, the cost will be very high. So to, uh, to reduce the cost problem, then this is the reason they're going to deploy the WDS in this um, scenario. So this requirement. Building site B has 20 to 30 mobile domina. Okay, and then it's required more than 90% place on the site can access the wireless network. And the rate is one Mbps. So let's look at the requirement. Signal cover outdoor area, medium user density, one Mbps bandwidth for each user. After doing a site survey, there's two kilometer distance between A and B, and no separator is between them. Well, when we're doing the WDS, one thing we need to uh, contact. Uh, uh, look to is about those of the Fresnel zone. Okay, if you still remember the Fresnel zone, we need to measure the connection between the two and AP. They have no obstacle or other building tree blocking in between. Okay, if they have anything is blocking uh, at the middle, they might have the uh, there will be interference or maybe they will block our signal connections. The device selection, we only using outdoor AP. To deploy and make sure the outdoor AP can support WDS. Okay, the frequency WDS using the five gigahertz, and the user area is covered by two point four. Okay, the link budget two kilometer WDS backhaul use eighteen dBi direction antenna, and eight dBi omnidirectional antenna is used. The signal strength is within 200 meters, is higher than minus 60 dBm. Capacity, there are 20 to 30 users. Each AP connected to 30 users. So one Mbps bandwidth for each user. So right here giving the parameter, the AP is using 27 dBm at 5 GHz, 24 for 2.4. So after the deploy, we look like this. Right here, they're using the outdoor AP, and they have using two different antenna. One antenna running the five gigahertz, and this five gigahertz is the directional antenna. It will point directly to the side A. Okay, side A here also using one antenna, which is the directional antenna. Okay, both of them they pointing are uh, pointing to each other in Y direction. So WDS backhaul distance is two kilometer. So using the 80 dBi direction antenna. Then another one is using the eight dBi direction antenna for 2.4 gigahertz user access. Okay, inside the building here. Okay, summary. W typical application design process, and also show you some of the example for the Intel Center AP, distributed AP. And the last one is the outdoor AP. The outdoor AP included the um, the WDS also.